Is it summer where you live? Are you having great weather? It's a great day here and my pups absolutely love spending time outside. There are so many interesting smells and sights and sounds we love to get out whenever the weather is good. But maybe you have a few questions about the great outdoors. Well, I'm here to help. In today's video, we are going to cover all things about being outside with your puppy, including exercise, safety, and how to manage that pupper when she wants to taste all those things on the ground that she shouldn't have. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Before we dive right in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss when another video goes live. Now, there are about 18,000 people in my Facebook group, Puppy Training with Michelle Lennon. Maybe you're one of them. With the help of my team, we give great advice to new puppy owners in that group. And you can imagine we get a lot of questions. So today I'm going to cover some of the most popular questions about being outside with your puppy. You're going to learn a lot, so stick with me. Oh, and if you're not a member of that amazing group, you should definitely join today. The link is in the description below. Okay, let's get started with the first question. How old does my puppy have to be before I can take her outside? This is one I actually get most often. Members of my group sometimes share that their vet has advised them to keep their puppies indoors until she's received all her vaccinations, which is usually around 16 weeks. Do you know what I have to say about that? Get a new vet. Yes, I said it. Those are some fighting words, but I really mean what I say. Proper and positive socialization and exposure has lasting effects on the rest of your dog's life. So the consequences of under socializing your puppy far outweigh the risks of safely getting out and about before they're fully vaccinated. Even the American Veterinary Society of Animal Behavior says so. They say the primary and most important time for puppy socialization is in the first three months of life. During this time, puppies should be exposed to as many people and animals and stimuli and environments as can be achieved safely. Of course, you want to keep her safe from diseases that might be carried in other animal feces, so plan your outings carefully. So, skip those dog parks and skip public places where unknown dogs have been hanging out. But it is imperative that you take your pup to new places like stores and fields and parking lots or even friends' houses. Now, we don't want all exposure to new things to involve interactions which could be potentially very overwhelming and scary to a young pup. So I'm not suggesting you make your dog meet all other dogs right now. After the second set of shots, pick one or two dogs that you know for the first play date experience. Now I have so much more to share on this topic and I'll send you to this video here for more information. Next question, please. All right, next question is after my puppy has a potty break, he doesn't want to come inside. What do I do? That's a great question. Of course, it's great when our pups go potty outside, but what happens if they want to stay out there and play? Well, I do want to encourage you to spend time outside with your pup. Let him or her explore the yard on a long leash and play fun games. It's a great way to burn off some energy, but I recommend you separate playtime and potty time. That way the routine of taking a potty break and then coming inside is well established. Even if you go inside for just a moment or two, do a quick game of tug or a training game in the house. Then you can go back out to the yard and play. This helps pup learn that potty time is completely different than playtime. Now, be sure that the fun doesn't always end when he goes inside or he's never gonna wanna go inside. Transition to inside with some fun games and treats and he'll be more likely to abide by your request. Moving on, what do we have next on our list of FAQs? Why does your dog stop and lay down when you take him outside for walks? Ooh, that's a good one. And yes, this is actually very common, but also very frustrating. I get it. We call this pancaking, and it means that your dog is not interested in continuing. That doesn't mean you have to stop all walks. After all, dogs who do not receive the appropriate amount of exercise can definitely display some unwanted and frustrating behaviors. But the resistance during the walk means you've likely advanced too quickly in the training, and there's too much going on for your dog to feel comfortable. Now, 
this is actually your cue to continue working with him on leash skills in your house and then slowly working up to training outside. Now this might take longer than you would like. After all, you're used to all those sights and sounds and smells, but to him, this is really overwhelming. There's a lot to take in, especially if the puppy's used to being inside. That's one reason to get your puppy out and about when he or she is young, so the outside world isn't so scary. It's like if you walked out of your quiet bedroom and you were suddenly in the middle of downtown Tokyo, you'd think that was a huge change. You'd also probably pancake too. So take it slow, start with decompression walks, and work on those leash skills in non-distracting environments first. Some dogs need a little extra help with this, or maybe they're humans do. If so, my online course, 30 Days to Puppy Perfection, would be a great option for you. I'll guide you through all the steps to teach your puppy how to enjoy those walks. Okay, next up, I received this question pretty recently. So what are some fun things I can do with my puppy outside? My games of fetch are getting boring. I love this question. This person actually recognized that novelty is good for dogs. If you have the luxury of a backyard or even an outdoor space, here are some fun ideas to try. I love setting up mini agility obstacle courses for my dogs. This includes things to climb over, tunnels to go through, things to go around, and things to move to get treats or kibble. Now, if you're having fun with these obstacles, your dog will too. You can use tasty treats to teach him how to navigate some of those items. So keep in mind that he may not know what to do with all of them in the beginning, and you may have to keep your expectations low and your patience high. Even if he's just learning, this is still great exercise for his brain. Now, you might even find that he's ready for a long nap after he was so physically active. Another great toy for the backyard is a sprinkler or even a shallow filled kiddie pool. Water in general can be so much fun. Now, if your dog seems nervous about it, just start really slow with a kiddie pool with just a few inches of water. Now, remember that messes like mud and dirt are a human annoyance. Dogs don't mind. And all the different textures on his feet are good for exposure training so he gets used to those new things. Now, if you want to make sure your dog doesn't track blood into the house, teach him to offer you his paws when he comes inside. Now, I've trained my dogs to give me a moment to wipe their paws before they get access to the rest of the house. That's something I can help you with as part of the pro level of my online course, where we can talk about the steps to achieve that on a Zoom call or even in my private Facebook group for students. Now, if you live in warm climate and have a pool in your backyard, swimming might be good exercise for your dog. Be sure that he is never out there alone and also train him to know where the steps are so he can get out. I've heard of too many cases of dogs who've fallen into pools and they weren't able to get out because the side was too high. So let's go into some more questions. I got this one the other day as well. Michelle, I love to hike. When can I start to bring my dog out on long hikes with me? Man, what a lucky dog! I think. Just like some humans love to hike and some humans really do not, it's important to evaluate if your dog is the hiking type. Hopefully this person did their research before getting a dog and they chose a breed that is more likely to enjoy this type of activity. When you have a young dog, it's important to limit the walks to about five minutes per month of age, maybe twice a day. We do this to protect their growing joints. Too much strain on those joints while they're still forming could lead to hairline fractures that show up a few years later and become lifelong problems for your dog. Now, as for the hike, I would recommend starting slowly. Just like a human who needs to train for an intense exercise event, before they jump right in, we do the same with our dogs as well. We'll want a warm-up activity, like a short hike, a cool down, and then allow for rest and recovery. With time, you can extend the hiking duration. Take some time to study animal science and anatomy so you can check for things like torn paw pads or signs of exhaustion. Dogs are really good at hiding their pain, so it's up to the human to pay close attention. Now, I have some great information in this video here all about dogs and exercise. I encourage you to check it out as part of your research before heading out on those long hikes. Now, these are some really great questions and I love hearing from all the puppy parents. So let's keep going. Next question, my dog picks up everything while out on walks. How can I train her to leave it or drop it? Well, the first thing I wanna share with this person is that they're not alone. This is a very common issue among dogs and their humans. There are definitely things we can do about it. And in my online course, I teach the leave it and the drop it cues. 
Believe it or not, these are not the same things, and you'll want to teach both of them and use both cues distinctively. Now, the lessons have to start in a very basic way and build up as the puppy is successful. It's not usually intuitive for humans to teach in this way. If that sounds like a lot of work, don't despair. I break these skills into short, fun training games that you and your puppy will enjoy doing together. Next question. What temperatures are too hot or too cold to take a puppy outside? Honestly, I wish there was a simple answer for this one with one number on the thermostat that you could remember. Temperature is one factor, but so is humidity. If the sun is up or down, the surface temperature of the sidewalk and other factors like breathe. So brachycephalic dogs, these with the shorter noses and the smushed in faces have actually a harder time regulating their temperatures in the warmer weather and have a difficult time breathing when they're overexerted or overexert themselves. So be sure you allow pauses in play and lots of cool down periods so your dog doesn't overheat. Know the signs of heat stroke in your dog. This includes excessive panting, excessive drooling, fever, bright red or gray or bluish gums, muscle tremors, weakness, vomiting, and diarrhea. Check the temperature of the walking surface with the back of your hand or the bottom of your foot. If you can't stand it for more than 10 seconds, it's definitely not safe for your dog. Now, I actually go into a lot more detail about sun and other weather in this video. I encourage you to check it out later. All right, let's move on. My puppy barks and lunges at other dogs when we go outside. What can I do about this? Wow, many factors can contribute to a dog walking poorly on the leash. They have pent up energy, they're overstimulated, there are too many distractions, and maybe they haven't been reinforced correctly, or maybe the positive reinforcement you're using is not of high enough value. Now, it's common to have to pull back on your training when you first start working on leash skills. It takes a lot of pre-training for a dog to walk calmly on a leash and pay no attention to the distractions around them. We actually start with the foundation skills found in module one in the 30 Day to Puppy Perfection course. We work with low-level distractions when we first start and gradually add in distractions as training sessions progress. Now, before I wrap up today, I'm going to give you one more tip on keeping your puppy safe indoors. But before I do, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss when another important lesson like this one goes live. Now, my last tip is to check your dog for fleas and ticks regularly. You can do this as part of your post-walk routine, and it's a nice cool-down activity for your pup. You can use a metal comb to brush your dog's fur after a walk outdoors. I've even used a hair dryer on the cool setting to blow the fur apart to see down to the skin. Ticks carry Lyme disease and that can make your dog and you very sick. So that's it for now. And if you liked this information, you'll love my other videos and my Better Puppy Behavior Workshop. This free workshop is all about how dogs think and learn and how to best train them. Check out the link below and sign up for the next time it's offered. In the comments below, tell me one outdoor activity you hope to do with your puppy.